So Apple just dropped what is arguably the biggest sports and fitness feature update for the Apple Watch in its entire history. Up until now, each year Apple releases a new Apple Watch and with that, a new watchOS platform. The sports and fitness features are getting kind of more and more minor, but this year that changes with watchOS 9. Now watchOS is the actual platform itself that runs atop the Apple Watch, and so that's different than the underlying hardware, in which case the most recent version announced last fall is the Apple Watch Series 7. Of course, Apple, generally speaking, releases a new Apple Watch version each fall, usually in the September timeframe, and it's expected we'll probably do the same again this September with Apple Watch Series 8. So today is part of Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference. That's the annual conference they hold each June that basically kind of highlights all the software features that are coming over the next few months. Uh, they announced a new slate of features for the Apple Watch. These features will roll out this fall. So again, on September, October timeframe, typically. Uh, so you won't see them today in your Apple Watch. You've got to go ahead and wait until the fall timeframe, unless you join one of the betas, in which case it'll come a little bit sooner. So I'm going to walk through all of these features kind of one after another because they are super impressive. I'm focusing pretty much mostly on the sports and fitness features, though I will talk about some of the kind of more general health ones and just more general Apple Watch bits a little bit later on. So first up is the biggie, which is the inclusion of native running power support. This is something we've seen added to watches from Coros and Polar in kind of sort of Garmin, but in Garmin's case, it required a sensor. This requires no external sensor. You just simply run with your watch and you can see your running power right there. They even hinted that there's some sort of targeting of running power as part of the structural workouts I'll talk about in a second. But having Apple actually acknowledge running power is a massive, massive shift in the running power kind of world. And hopefully it'll bubble things up to the surface a little bit and also hopefully apply a little bit of pressure to their competitors to make this process a little more seamless. Of course, the thing to keep in mind over the next few months is everyone, maybe including myself, will want to compare and figure out is Apple's running power accurate. But here is a dirty little secret to keep in mind there is no agreed upon standard for running power accuracy. There are different ways to measure it and what you include and do not include in that running power number will vary from device to device. So anyone claiming that one running power is better than the other is probably trying to sell you something. Still, I think there's tons of potential there, especially if units are consistent to themselves, which is I know the lowest bar you can have in power meter accuracy, but that's right now where the power meter industry is for running power. Okay, and a quick note, if you're finding this video interesting or useful, if you could just hit the like button at the bottom there, it really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Next up is inclusion of a few running efficiency metrics, including vertical oscillation, as well as ground contact time and stride length. Stride length is pretty common amongst many different watches and devices, but vertical oscillation and ground contact time have been primarily Garmin running dynamics metrics for a long time, and then Coros added them, and other companies have added them throughout the years. So one of the things that vertical oscillation can be used for is measuring how smooth you're running, but usually though they are measured in either sensors that attach to the back of your running shorts, or a chest strap, or even sensors in insoles in the shoes. It is virtually unheard of to have GCT and VO measured on the wrist. And Apple went to great lengths in this presentation to talk about like all the algorithm, machine learning they do to separate those out. It'll be interesting to compare this because this is something that we do have tons of good data on, tons of easy ways to compare this. And then with that, to see how much smoothing Apple might do to this in order to compensate for the fact that they're trying to measure both torso movement and arm swing movement that may change as you increase or decrease pace. Again, all things to kind of look at a little bit down the road. Next, they've revamped some of the displays on the sports tracking app. Uh, they've added a new heart rate zone that you can see right here, which is pretty cool. They've also added the ability to create alerts on different metrics. So you can create alerts on heart rate, for example, uh, or pace or cadence. And it seemed like they also hinted as well running power, but you can't quite see far enough down on that screen. So we're gonna have to wait a few hours or days or whatnot until it shows up in beta to see what else is there. Additionally, they've added fully custom workouts to this. So now you can create your own uh, intervals with your own defined uh, work portions as well as rest portion based on either distance or time. And you can have targets for that as well that can be overlaid on top of that, which will notify you either audibly or via vibrations. Next, they've created a bit of a virtual pacer type function. Uh, this will automatically recognize your certain routes and then allow you to compare your best time or your last time uh, as you're running that route against your previous history on that particular route. This is very similar to virtual pacer functions that we've seen from countless watches over the years, uh, but it's super cool to see Apple kind of doing something in this realm. And I'm looking forward to seeing how this works in real life. Now, besides running power, probably one of the biggest announcements here is the addition of a full track on support mode uh, with tracking of transitions as well as automatic transition support, meaning they'll automatically go from swim to bike to run uh, and track each of those sports individually without you having to press anything at all. 
We saw Wahoo add this on the Wahoo Rival Watch uh, in November of 2020, so 18 or so months ago now, uh, and no one else has really done that. I wasn't sure if that was a patent reason or whatever the case may be, uh, and it's a super cool feature that worked really well for me on Wahoo's watches, uh, so I'm definitely interested in giving that a whirl here and seeing how well that works. One of the challenges with this mode is false positive detection and making sure that there's a way to back out if it does incorrectly detect going into a given mode. So that's something I'll be looking for as I go to test this. Now transitioning into a couple of general health and fitness things, uh, they're adding sleep phase detection. So they'll add uh, detection for awake, REM, core, and deep sleep. Uh, I assume core is just general sleep, like light sleep, Well, most other places call light sleep, but that's what they're, they're calling a core sleep. They claim that they did the largest clinically validated study with the most participants, most diverse participants, set ever around this, but they didn't include any citations on this or references to this, so we'll have to take them at the word for now, and then hopefully they'll actually publish that study, and we'll be able to see kind of the details of that particular piece of work. Next up, they added AFib history, and what's notable about this is that during the presentation, they said that this is pending FDA approval. In reality, they actually got the approval just a couple hours prior from the FDA, but of course, the presentation was pre-recorded ahead of time. Uh, but anyways, this is super cool. If you're wearing your Apple Watch, it'll go ahead and track the history over time and even plot all that data on there and do trend analysis on which days you may encounter AFib or more likely to encounter AFib. It's super cool stuff. And to see what Apple's doing in this sort of medically realm of things uh, and surfacing that information to the top and helping doctors and patients maybe identify those trends and maybe identify trigger points uh, is just awesome stuff. And then finally, on the health and fitness side, they're adding medicine tracking. Uh, so if you do take medicine, you can add those in there. You can even scan the bottle of the medication itself, figure out if there's anything that it might conflict with. I'll give you warnings about alcohol. Again, it's just an example of Apple kind of raising the bar on the general health and wellness and medicine side. Uh, even if they aren't necessarily leaders in the sports side, uh, they definitely are one of the leaders in kind of the general wellness side of things. And then lastly, there's a few new like general features. They blasted through these and I'm gonna blast through them as well. Uh, number one, they've added four new watch faces. Uh, number two, they refreshed the Siri UI, uh, including new banner notification design. Number Number three, the podcast app on the watch itself lets you discover and follow new podcasts. So basically just increasing discoverability. Number five, they added support for dogs and cats to the portrait faces uh, watch face. They extended the language support and they finally you can now give kids access to home kit devices uh, from their watch itself. Again, a very small number of features that are in the general pile, but I assume a lot of those more general features we may see later on kind of expanded upon when they announce the Apple Watch Series 8 in that September probably is time frame. And in fact, generally speaking, that's where you're going to see more hardware focused things. And so some of these things that like the sleep phases certainly point to perhaps a bigger battery in the Apple Watch uh, and maybe more rugged design from the sports tracking standpoint as well, giving triathlon support and things like that. But ultimately we won't really know until September. But what we do know is that historically speaking, Apple like shows off 80 to 90% of their cards uh, for new features in the Apple Watch as part of this event here. So uh, this kind of gives us a pretty good template for where they're going for. And based on today's announcement, that is clearly a super heavy sports focus. I mean, the vast majority of this presentation was spent on the sports features and new sports features. And you can see that even manifested itself in how much time I spent on it in this video itself. So hopefully that trend continues for September and we see even more sports features either on the software side or the hardware side. Anyways, hopefully you found this interesting and useful. If so, go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness, including maybe testing out some of these features. With that, have a good one.